Boom, what's happening guys? Welcome back to the podcast. This is episode 41 of the Construction Entrepreneur Podcast. And look, today's topic is all about compound interest and a compound return on not only your money, but also on everything you might do in the business and you know, compound interest and the, 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 the impact of compounding, which is basically just results over time stacked up and stacked up over and over again, is fucking huge. It is mental. I learned about this Probably about 10 years ago, someone explained it to me and it really made sense and clicked. So it's very important to get hold of as a business. And look, just don't just take my word for it. I come from a council estate, I'm only as clever as I fucking am. But the most cleverest person in the world, Albert Einstein, he said that compound interest was the eighth wonder of the world. And then in partnership with that as well, Warren Buffett, the best investor there is in the world, undoubtedly, you know, he's the most famous, most successful investor of, of money into businesses. He has based his whole thesis, his whole investing mind on the power of compound. He lets compounding interest bring him the big returns in all the companies he invests in. So if those two dudes are very clever and switched on to it, it's something that me and you as entrepreneurs and business people should be very switched on to as well. And we should really learn about because take Warren Buffett, his example, when he bought into Coke, Coca-Cola in 1988, it was for, I can't remember how many shares it was, but he owned 6% of the company at the time. That compounding effect, the growth of Coca-Cola from 1988, all the way up until today, his shares are now worth 24 billion pounds. And that's because what he does is he invested his original amount of capital, the dividend return he got on his capital every year, he reinvested back into the company and he just kept stacking it back in. So his original money wasn't actually that big, but the dividends interest that he keeps putting back in is built up over time and over time. And it's now worth 24 billion just all on its own. That's one investment that he's done over his time. And it's the power of compounding that has allowed him to do that. So if me and you can get a smidge of that, fuck me, we'll make a lot of money and it'll be worth doing. So listen in, if you get compounding on your side, you will make a shitload of money, even by doing the most dumb proof, basic, simple stuff that anyone can do that's accessible to absolutely anyone. You don't even need a lot of money to get started. And you know, depending on where you're at in business, you're not talking like you need millions and millions to allow compounding to do its thing, and make you a lot of money, especially when you compare this to what society and what the system pushed towards us about saving money in the bank accounts, which what does a bank do? They basically take all of our money that we put in a bank account and then they go and invest it themselves and they earn compound interest. And what else does the society put towards us? Have a pension, invest in a pension when the returns are fucking abysmal. And, you know, I'll show you the stark contrast of what's going to be a better option of putting your money into because you can have compound interest on your side. And look, full disclosure, I'm not a fucking financial advisor. I'm not someone who's fucking qualified on paper with a fucking nice little certificate on your desk to say what to do with money. But put on the common sense hat and someone from the street, if you like, with fucking street smart to go, right, where's the best place to put your money and what's the, the things that we should listen to as normal, decent people just in business trying to cut it and make a few quid and fucking get ahead in life. Compound interest is the biggest thing that you can learn that will make you a lot and it will fucking unlock the next levels of doors. But if you don't understand compounding, you're not really going to grow serious levels of wealth. So it's very, very valuable. So I hope you're in a position you can listen to this and pay attention because it's going to be a, a fucking massive learning point for you guys because it certainly was for me when I learned about it. So number one, as we dig into compounding, this, the simple thing that I learned, I thought I'd tell you guys exactly the same thing because hopefully this will spark the same thing in you. If you imagine you're playing a round of golf, okay? So you've got 18 holes on a round of golf. So even if you don't like golf, you can understand the premise that there's 18 holes. And let's say you put a bet on for every hole, double or quits. So you're playing against a partner and the first hole you go, right, let's put a quid on. And whoever wins, they get two quid. Very, very simple. You're starting with a quid, it's nothing. Anyone can have a quid put in. You don't need a lot of money for that. But if you win every hole, you can start to see the compounding effect. So hole two, you've got two quid. Hole three becomes four quid. Hole four, eight quid. Very simple, you don't need to be a fucking genius at maths to understand this. But the key thing is it escalates quite quick because hole five is 16 quid, hole six is 32 quid, hole seven, 64, 
becomes 128, becomes 256. And by hole 10, you're on 512 quid, just by doubling every hole. And yes, it's not a great lot of money. Look, 500 quid's not gonna fucking change your life, but bear with me, keep going. Because once you get to hole 14, you're at 8,192 quid if you just kept doubling every hole, every hole. And yes, you've got to win every hole, but this just proves the point of compounding over time that it just fucking adds up. And it doesn't seem like a lot once you do it on hole one, one pound to two pounds, not a lot. But once you're on hole 14, it's 8,192 quid. It's worth being in the game. But then from there, it just escalates massively because hole 15 is 16,000 quid. You've doubled your money. Hole 16 is 32,768. And then hole 17 becomes 65 grand. And hole 18, you'd end up on 131 grand if you just doubled every hole. So 18 holes, and you think about that, right? If you could make 18 plays and you could just double your money, it starts getting your mind thinking about the possibilities of things that you could do, that you can just do simple stuff to double your money on, on playing simple, easy runs Especially when you put this in a business sense and you go, okay, well, if we put 100 quid into this and we get 200 quid back, and you just keep doing that. You put your 200 quid in, you get 400 quid back. Put your 400 quid in, you get your 800 quid back. Just start playing a mind game with yourself. And this is where it just links into the whole mindset thing of, people always look at things and go, well, it's not a lot to start. It's not a lot to start, you know. It's that, like I say, that one pound becomes two pound. Who gives a fuck, two pounds still nothing but it's the premise. And then this is what compound interest is all about. And this is the mindset you wanna have in your own mind of, you're playing a bigger game. And if you can just get into that and play that, play these 18 holes, it starts paying massively. Because you imagine if that's a 19th hole, that 131 grand becomes 260 grand. It starts getting out of fucking control. It starts getting like silly, the longer that you play the game. And this is what compound interest is all about. The longer you play, the more money you make. And it's having that long view mindset. And this is what you need for business all the time is a long view mindset, not a short term mindset of let's play this game to fucking win. So the odds are in your favor and you can just stack those wins up and not take the profit because this is what people would do. You flip the one pound into two pounds and you go and spend your two pound and you're back to zero again. You've got to keep it in and keep playing the game. And it's just a mindset to be not excited, not buzzed and go and spend the money and run down to the sweet shop and fucking cane it all but equally not getting bored because you're not seeing something massive to begin with and another way of looking at this is let's take putting your money into a very boring asset class which is stocks and shares right stocks and shares is just something very very boring but if you take the, the basic premise of this that the FTSE 100 or the S&P 250 is or the S&P 500, sorry, should I say, is basically, for the FTSE 100, is the 100 biggest, best performing companies in the UK at any given time. But the beauty with that is, is that if one company starts underperforming, another company then fills that slot. So it's always based on the 100 best top companies. The FTSE 500, uh, the S&P 500 is exactly the same in America. So you're betting against the 100 best companies in the UK. So is that a safe bet? Yes, it is. It's full of all the big companies that are absolutely flying. They're fucking billions and billions of pound companies that know what they're doing. And like I say, worst case, if one of them drops off, it gets replaced with the next biggest company and gets put into that bracket of the FTSE um, 100. So you're not really going to go wrong. And if you look back, typically they grow at 7 8%, 9%. It depends. Some years... Things don't really grow, but other years is bigger growth. That's life and the reality. But if you took a long view on this, and any idiot can go and do this, you're going to put some money in the FTSE 100 or the S&P 500. And let's say you just bang in 10 grand, because most people can get their hands around 10 grand or have a figure of, we can park 10 grand into something that's boring. And you've got to leave it there for a long time. It's something that you don't touch. And this is where a lot of people go wrong with investing is, they put 10 grand in a year later, they look at it and it might have only gone up 200 quid because it had a low a low year that year. They get deflated and they withdraw the money. It's not the mindset you want because then compound's not done its work. It's not done its time. So let's just say you put 10 grand in today and you're also going to put in 500 quid a month because you're looking at it as a long view thing, right? And let's just say as an average, 
return is 8%, annualized return of 8%. It's nothing exciting. You're not going to get rich after a few years. It's a very boring, steady way of, of putting money into something. But you're not putting a lot in, so it doesn't really matter because you can just put it, set it, and forget it. So you put 10 grand in, and every year, because of that 500 pound a month you're putting in, you're, you're putting in an additional six grand every single year. Now, the interest after year one, you've earned a thousand pound interest. Now, with 16 grand in the bank, a normal British bank account, you're not earning a thousand pounds interest. You're earning, what are you earning? 0.2%, something like that. You're earning nothing, absolutely zero. So if you've got money in a bank account, it's earning you zero. What's the point? You may as well put it somewhere that could earn you some money. So that thousand pound interest you're earning, okay, not a lot. Your 16 grand becomes 17 grand after that first period. But then it starts building. Year two, you're earning 1,500 pound interest a year. Year three, 2,000 pound interest. And the key thing is, if you keep going, by year 12, you're earning 10 grand, or well, over 10 grand a year interest clean interest. So you've matched the money that you originally put in. That original £10,000 deposit you put in, by year 12, you're getting that back every single year. So compounding is on your side and it's growing massively. It's really bumping up. Now by year 20, you're earning 24 grand a year just in interest. The compound interest is doing its thing because it's just grown over time and over time. So the way to look at that is, if you took a 20 year view on it, you have put in 130 grand. So you put your initial 10 grand in and your 500 pound a month it was racked up to a total of 130 grand invested. You have then accrued 201,000 pounds in interest. So obviously again, I'm saying this is based on a steady set, 8% every year. It will go up, it will go down. But if you view it on that for 20 years, it's 200 grand earned income for, for doing nothing. You know, it's just interest given by the money that you've put in and you've just kept reinvesting it back in to build the pot. So you've got a value there of 331 versus the, so it's 130 you put in and 201 you've earned in interest. That's 331 grand in 20 years time. That's quite a substantial amount. It's not a lot. You're not gonna be able to retire on that. You're not gonna be able to fucking have a millionaire lifestyle and fucking, you know, drink champagne for breakfast. But when you look at the stats of it, right, that 331 grand, imagine you did that for your kid. The day that your kid's born, you go, right, wallop 10 grand into an account and we put in 500 pounds every month. If you did that in a bank account, you're getting zero interest pretty much. You'd have 130 grand, okay, great. But if you just put it into something that's gonna generate you 8% year return, you'd have 331 grand. It's quite a big difference and that can obviously set your kid up for life for university or for buying their first property or it's actually an income for them because you're earning at that point by year 20 you're earning 24 grand a year just on the interest it's building up so you wouldn't want to take the money out because you may as well keep the interest accruing and obviously if you look at this from a, a pension point of view what's a state pension now the basic state pension it's something like 750 pound a month it's absolutely nothing. You know, it's it's, it's ridiculous. It's, what is that? It's not even nine grand a year you're earning. Whereas if you just did this and took control of the situation, you can earn 24 grand a year in 20 years time by the time it's retiring in your own pension pot and you're in full control of it and you can do what you fucking want with your own money. And this is just another stark example of the power of compound interest. Like it's so important to get your head around that a lot of people get to retirement age and moan about, oh, the pension shit is this, is that but it's in your control. You can take steps today to get in your control. And most of my audience, I know it's 30, 40, maybe creeping into the, the early 50s audience, but mainly you're in that category of the early 30s category. And you think retirement age is gonna be like 60, 70. It's well within your control to let compounding do you a fucking massive favor. You know, I'm just saying that of a small sum of money that putting that 10 grand in, Imagine you had a zero to that, you put 100 grand in and you keep adding fuel to it. It's going to be a hell of a lot of money. So get your head around it seriously, guys, as I say this and listening to it, because it, the options are there. Anyone can go and set up an account. Um, the one I use is with Hargreaves Lansdowne. And you can literally just lump some money in, put it into an SP 500. You don't have to be clever. You don't have to pick what stock. 
you are literally just letting compounding do you a massive favour. And then the next one, business. Think about the return on investment and the compounding return you get on a business. Because I guarantee most people have started their business with not actually a lot of money. Typically construction, you don't need a lot of money to get started. You know, if you said you put five grand in to get started, yes, there's going to be some people that put 50 grand in, 100 grand. But generally, people that start on the tools, they put something not even like five grand into just getting going and just getting a website maybe and some t-shirts and a fucking van or some tools. You don't need a hell of a lot of money going in. But let's say you put five grand into a business and you start and you start getting trading and you're earning money from maybe being on the tools and then some company profit as well. And let's say you earn a hundred grand in that year, which is very, very achievable, very achievable. Versus the five grand you put in, it's a 1900% return on investment. It's fucking colossal. Where do you actually get that in a bank? You don't. You're never ever going to get that anywhere else. Are there risks attached to business? Of course there are. Are there things you're going to get burnt on? Of course you are. But just take the basic premise because then you roll that money back over. If you've then got 100 grand in the bank, you then reinvest that back into the business. And this is what people don't understand as well. Sometimes you make your first bit of money in a business and you want to withdraw it and take it and go and spend it. It's the worst thing you can do because... Well, one, you're, you're creating all the tax points and you're not tax efficient, so you're going to get fucking fisted, basically. And then what do you do with it? You keep it in your own personal bank account and it sits there, or you go and buy something that you don't really need anyway, or you could have bought it smarter through the business, or, you know, opening up a whole can of worms. But you get my point and, and the place I'm coming from. But if you do that, and you, you know, if you do it the other way and you, you build up the money in the company and then you reinvest it back into the company with bigger presence online, SEO, more training for staff, um, taking on bigger jobs, all sorts of things, you know, training, whatever it might be, back in the business to keep the business growing and basically getting more leads in, getting better staff and attracting better clients so you're just doing more revenue, more turnover. The compound interest and the return on your money is fucking huge. So never ever look at when you're putting money back into a business or you're forsaking yourself and not taking money out the compounded interest is working away, but you can't see it. You cannot see it instantly. You don't see the instant result. It's over time. Compounding only happens over time. And it's just very small, very small, and it's invisible. But the thing that really stuck for me about compounding is, is you don't have to see it to believe in it. You have to understand that it's a very real thing that will pay you off eventually. So just get your mindset into that gear that compounding is going to be your best friend. It's like your best silent partner in a business or your investments that you, you choose to make yourself. And like I say, you know, pick your own investments, do your own stuff, do your own research. Don't just take anyone's word for it, whether it's stuff you listen to me on the podcast or you see something else from someone else just saying put some money into this. The example I gave you with the S&P 500 or the, the FTSE 100 is very, very basic amateur level investments you know very very low risk people that don't understand it will tell you it's high risk but it's very very low risk you know it's not something new it's not something that's reliant on new technology or it's some new possible thing that might happen it's a very steady eddy thing all the banks put all their money into it so you can you can see there that it's a very fucking trusted way of, of earning return on in, in in your money but investor's mindset and a compound interest mindset is long-term. It's not a short-term fix. And then you can compare this as well. to the, Take the gym, for example. You don't see the result on day one. You don't go to the gym and do one workout and you wake up the next day, you've got a fucking six-pack, a nine-inch cock, and you're fucking on top of the world. It doesn't fucking happen. It just does not happen. Day two, nothing happens. You don't really see anything. Day three, nothing. Four, nothing. Five, nothing. A couple of weeks, you might start seeing some changes. A month, a few more changes. Three months, you look pretty different. A year, you're fucking completely different because it's all compounded. You following a, a diet plan, you following a training plan, you looking after yourself and prioritizing, it's all compounded over time. You do not wake up every day and see any marginal fucking gain. It is compounding working in silence. And this is what you've got to have your head on all the time because this is what people do, isn't it? With diet plans and training plans. 
you do it for a week, don't really see a big result, you're expecting a bigger result, and you throw, you throw the towel in, you, you, you fuck it off. Business is the same, you're not gonna see the results, and you can't fuck it off, you just can't. So this investing is the same. This whole compounding thing is all the same shit. And this is what I mean about this, you know, with a podcast, right, I don't really talk too much about strategy of winning work, delivering jobs and, you know, running the company. I, I've covered it, don't get me wrong, I've covered it a lot, but 99% of it is fucking psychology. It's your own headspace, your own mindset, and your opinions and your views on it. So the more I can change your beliefs, because if I change your beliefs by telling you stuff on a podcast, you're going to change your habits, you're going to change your actions because you've listened to something and you've gone, you know what, that fucking makes sense. And sometimes a lot of the stuff that I'll talk about is you've heard it before, but sometimes you just need it said in a different way or sold in a different position, uh, an actual proof of it working, you know, and, and it just it just is. It's all a fucking mindset of being not attached to a quick win or being impulsive or wanting a result fucking now, now, now. If you can be attached to, right, let's do the right smart stuff for a long time and let Compound do its work. We don't need a lottery ticket. We don't need a fucking big win because the win's already happening by just doing the work. And this is just a mindset I want you to have. So really, when you understand this, everything is about compounding. Every single thing that you need to be successful in a business or to make money or to get the better clients or to fucking whatever, it all relies on compounding because when you meet someone, take networking for example, and I say networking loosely because there's two versions of networking, and again, I've spoken about this before. There's networking with the right people and being in front of the right people and having a cup of tea with the right person who could lead you to work or could be a valuable relationship. And there's these wanky networking things and a lot of people you meet there is fucking, it's a waste of time. But every time you sit in front of someone, you have a coffee with them or you have a meeting with them, you might not get anything for the first 10, the first 20, the first 30. But a year down the line, that person might come in use to you or that person might contact you with an opportunity. It's a compounding effect that the more people that know you, the more people that can fucking do work with you or business with you or have an opportunity created. It's exactly the same with learning something. Sometimes you'll learn something. You don't need it just yet. You know, take this podcast again. There might be something that, you don't directly learn straight away, but in three months time or a year's time, you go, ah, oh, fucking hell, Dino said about it on a podcast, and you go back to it and you go, ah, fuck, yeah, got it. Because an opportunity's come up or a situation's happened or a problem's occurred and you need to solve the fucking problem. So it all compounds. A social media post is the same thing. You might get three likes on one, 10 likes on another, zero on the next one. It doesn't matter. It's a compounding effect of one, doing the work and getting into the habit of it, and the compounding effect of you don't know who's seen it and they might go back to it and go, they might have you in their mind of they're the guys that I would go to if you're a plumbing company, you're a building company, you're a security company, you're an electrical company. The compound effect of more people seeing your shit, seeing your posts and being front and centre and front of mind of the people to go to. So there is a compounding effect with all of your marketing efforts. If you're in a position where you get a bit deflated at the minute because you are doing some marketing but it's not quite working you need to just keep doing more and shut up and just keep doing it because the compounding effect will catch up as long as you're good as long as you're learning and you're getting good at marketing it will catch up and the compounding effect will pay you off in dividends massively it's all the same stuff no difference to raising a kid or teaching the dog the over you know keep training it doing the lessons it pays off eventually it's a compounding effect happening so I hope that's been some clear, good examples for you guys and you can apply this to your life now and go, right, okay, and your business. Go, right, where are we at the minute where we're not quite getting a result, but where is the compound effect going to kick in? Because it will kick in. If you just keep doing the work, if you keep doing the social media post, if you keep doing the quotes, if you keep doing the putting yourself out there to meet people to win work, if you keep doing the putting money into investments that are going to just keep paying you over and over again and you just don't get bored, you don't cash out, you just keep running with it, the compound effect will pay off. So I hope you learned that from this lesson. It will be a massive thing to you if you fucking take it on board and put it to work. So if you like this episode, guys, please do share it. Tag me on Instagram. It's at Dean Barton Real. I will share it back. Hope you get you a bit of exposure yourself as well. 
which is good to hear feedback from people. That's it for this episode, and I'll see you on the next one. Bosh!